Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa, coming to you on the Scripture Person Live this morning to speak the Word of God into our lives by the grace of God. I believe that the Lord has something, as usual, extraordinary in our lives in a moment like this. So I ask that you prepare yourself, you open up your heart, your listening ear, and that you can be able to perceive the things of the Spirit as we share the Word of God this morning. Let us pray before we hear. Father, we thank you and we bless you once again for giving us an opportunity to listen to your voice. In your Word, there is power. In your Word, there is transformation. In your Word, there is healing. And so, Father, as we sit under the shadow of your power, I pray this morning, Father, you'll minister to us greatly in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be no confusion or disruption in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless you and I honor you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I would like to speak about a topic the Lord has laid in my heart. I have titled, Do Not Be Fooled. You are not the only one. Do not be fooled. You are not the only one. Now, I read the Bible in the book of First Kings, chapter number 18. We're going to read verse number 22, uh, from verse number 20 to verse number 22. The book of First Kings, chapter number 18, from verse number 20 to verse number 22. So I have summoned all the people of Israel and the prophets to Mount Carmel. Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, how much longer will you waver, hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people were completely silent. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only prophet of the Lord who is left. But Baal has 450 prophets. Now bring two bulls, the prophets of Baal may choose whichever one they wish to cut it to pieces, lay it on the wood of their altar, but without setting it on fire, I'll prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood of their altar, but without setting it on fire, I'll prepare the other bull and lay it on the, on the altar, on the wood, on the altar, but not set it on fire. Then call on the name of your God, and I'll call on the name of the Lord, the God who answers, by setting fire to the wood is the true God, and the people agreed. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to understand that God will always have people who will work for him at any time. The fact that you are in a position to fulfill the purpose of God does not make you the only person that God will use. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to know that God has, it has pleased God through his own wisdom to allow you and me to be involved in his vineyard. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we keep functioning as the Lord gives us the capacity to do or to go to an extent that he wants us to go because he alone has the ability to give us the capacity to deliver his objective and his purpose. You should never underestimate God's capacity that you cannot be replaced. In fact, there is nobody who is irreplaceable in the hands of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So when you understand what it is that God does for you to allow you to work for him in the vineyard, you must be very careful lest you're driven by ego and pride to even imagine that God cannot do without you. Don't be fooled. Don't ever, ever be fooled. You cannot be the only one that God can use. There are many people, some you might even never ever know about, that stand for God out of a very, very pure heart. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the same things are repeated. 
Praise the name of the Lord. If you read now 1 Kings chapter number 19 from verse number 15, this is what I also wanted to talk about. 1 Kings 19 from verse number 15, the Bible says, Then the Lord told him, Go back to the same way you came and travel the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrived there, anoint Hazael to be the king. Now, I want you to know that this is happening after this prophet had thought that he was the only one. And God now tells him to go and anoint other people in his place. Praise the name of the Lord. This is something that, in fact, verse number 16, verse says, Then anoint Jehu, the, grand of, the grandson of Nimshi, to be king of Israel, and anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, from the town of Abel-Mehola, to replace you as my prophet. I want you to know, when you think you are the only one that is sitting back, that God has not raised any other person, the new time for replacement is just around the corner. Praise the, Lord, the name of the Lord. The time for your replacement is just about the corner. Very, very important. Now, if you read verse number 10 of 1 Kings 19, verse number 10, it says, Elijah replied, I have seriously served. The Lord was looking for Elijah and because he had run away from the threats of the wife of Ahab. Now, Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and they are trying to kill me too. Praise the Lord. Now, it is not true that you are the only person the Lord can use. That's not true. And I want you to learn from these lessons this morning that you are not the only best. God has other people he can use. You are not the only best or actually the best. God has other people across the world that he can use to deliver his purposes and objects. In fact, with your human, cap with your human capacity, there are many things you cannot do. You're limited. You cannot be in two places at the same time. You don't have the energy to work without resting. You are not the only best that God has. Just understand that. And if you for any reason think you're the only one, there could be a replacement who could do much better than yourself. And that's what God told Elijah. Go and anoint Elisha in your place. If you think you're the only one, if you think you're the only one who can do something for me, no. I'm going to do something extraordinary in the name of Jesus Christ. So you have to understand. You have to keep on believing and knowing that it takes the hand of God. You and you are, yes, being used of God, but you are not the only person that God can use. There are others. Now, number two, there are people who can do better than what you're doing. If they are in your place, if they are given opportunity and responsibility, they will do much better than you yourself are doing. You're not the best. You are not the best. God has other people. There are those who can do much better than you are doing yourself. Sometimes I sit back and I get reports from the poor supervisor, and some of these reports are much better than mine. Much, much better. The reasoning the, the power behind the thought. All these are basically great things that God does through people we work with. Don't ever think that you are the best. God can use other people to do even better. Now, if you're a leader and people below you are better than yourself, then you can be sure you'll succeed. Because if they put their energies and their thoughts in the process, then the delivery will be much better. Number three, it's all about grace and favor and not eloquence. Now, I asked a statement the other day, would you mind a bad handwriting with a good answer or a good handwriting with a bad answer? The answer is, I would prefer a bad handwriting with a good answer. And so it's not about eloquence. Paul says, when I came to you, I did not come to you in the excellence of man's wisdom or eloquence, but I came to you in the demonstration of the power of the Almighty God. So the things we do, it's about grace and favor from God, not because we have got the human expertise and strategy 
to deliver the objective. Not at all. It is good to be eloquent. It's good to be intellectual. It's good to have strategy. That is all okay. But God goes beyond eloquence and strategy and planning. The anointing, the grace of God, the favor of God upon your life marks the entire difference. Praise the Lord. When the grace of God is upon a man, when the favor of God is upon a man, or a woman for that matter, they are irresistible. Praise the name of the Lord. They are irresistible. And so, do not be fooled. You are not the only one. Do not even be deceived. You're not the only one. God has got millions and millions of people he can choose to apply at whatever place, whatever time, for whatever purpose, in whatever capacity. God has got many people he relies on. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't be fooled. You're not the only one. And even if you chose not to do it, God will still find people to do it. And if you decided, I'm not going to do this, God will find a way of doing that which he desires to do at his time for the glory and honor of his name. God will decide to do what he want to do at what time, using whoever he wants to use, because God can never be limited. Praise the name of the Lord. I came therefore to inspire you. I came to speak into your life just to bring to your attention that when you have opportunity to serve God, do it with all your energies. Give all your heart to it. Purpose to deliver the objective that God has for you and do it without limitation. Allow God to be the one who continues to grace your life to deliver that which he wants you to deliver in your life. Don't be fooled. You are not the only one. Even if people listen to you, they take every instruction you give them, they obey every command you give them, they lift you in high esteem, be very careful. You are not the only one and you cannot be the only one. There have been great people in this world, they are no longer there, but the world is moving on. We have had many great ministers of the word of God in this life. They are not there anymore, they have slept in the Lord, but the work continues. You are not the only one. Don't be fooled. You're not the only one. In whatever capacity you have, in whatever position God has placed you in, let me tell you this morning, you can be replaced. And when you are really replaced, things might be much better than they were when you are not there. That, that, you see, things will be much better than when you are there. As in, if there is a replacement for you, things will move in a much better way. Don't be deceived. You're not the only one. You are not the only one. The, the false belief that I'm the only one who can do it is a bad belief. The only thought that you are the only one who can do it is a bad thought. The only imagination that you are the only one is actually a false imagination. God has many people he can apply. He has only by his grace allowed us to function and allowed us to do what we got to do at a particular time like this. And so I came to encourage you. I came to speak right into your life. I came to just have and request that your eyes be open to see that as long as God has given you capacity and opportunity, do your best in the season and the time that the Lord has allowed you to function without necessarily comparing yourself to another person, thinking that you are better than them. That is not a principle in the kingdom, that you are better than other people. That is not true. God can choose to validate a person who you never thought will be used of God and make them to function much better than the people you thought are qualified. Have you not read the Bible about the anointing of David to be king? Those that appear to be were not. In fact, they were told, do you have any other son? They said, yes, there's one son who is the field tending of the flock. And the prophet said, we will not sit until that young man is brought. You can imagine. Even when the people appear not to qualify, God 
can qualify them. May the good Lord bless you. The good Lord be with you. The good Lord continue to lift you. The good Lord continue to establish himself in you to know that as long as God has given us capacity to serve and to function, we'll not ever, ever take it for granted, but we will keep glorifying his name and thanking him for what he has said he will do and keep sticking on the line, on the call of God without prejudice, without overlooking anybody, without thinking that we are greater than anybody else. May the Lord help us to understand this and apply it in our lives, both in word and in deed. God bless you. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for speaking to us every day. We thank you, Father, for reminding us that we are not the only people that God can use. Help us to do our part while trying and getting opportunity to lift others into the work of the ministry. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The good Lord be with you. This has been your servant and your host, Pastor Johnston Sacco, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription, your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Shalom. The good Lord bless you and the good Lord lift you. Amen and amen.